Hey y'all, in this review video, we're just gonna do a quick recap of some of the basic concepts behind uh, circuit functioning. So basically revisiting the three big components of Ohm's law, current, resistance, and voltage, and just talking about what those mean again conceptually, as well as why they have the relationships that they do. So we'll go ahead and start with just the basic idea of current. So just to be clear, when we're talking about a circuit functioning, What's really going on in that electrical device to make it work is that there have to be charged particles moving through the circuit, okay? It is the act of electrons moving through the filament of a light bulb that allows it to light up. It's the act of electrons moving through the circuitry in your phone or in your calculator or any other electrical device that allows it to function. So it's really all about the movement of charged particles, specifically electrons, through circuits that allows them to function, okay? And so if we're talking about this movement of charge, what we're really talking about is current, um, which is giving us a way of, of representing how quickly and, and the rate at which charge is moving through our circuit. It's like velocity for electrons in a systematic fashion, okay? So we're talking about current, we're talking about the rate at which charge is moving through a circuit. Now, a high current can really then mean one of two things, all right? It could mean that we've got lots and lots of electrons all moving together, or it could mean that the electrons that we do have are moving super fast through our circuit, okay? So the same way that when we talked about momentum, momentum um, is a product of both mass and velocity. So having a lot of momentum could mean having a lot of mass or having a really high velocity. Current is kind of the same idea that if we have a high current, it either means lots of charges are moving or the charges that we have are moving really fast or potentially both. So that's the basic idea of what current is. We're looking at how rapidly we're getting charge moving through our circuit. And the thing that propels that current forward is voltage, which is supplied by our battery or the outlet or whatever our power source is. Now, when we talk about voltage, we're really looking at the difference in electric potential between two different locations. Now, in the case of a battery, we're looking at the difference in electric potential between the two terminals of the battery. For an outlet, we're looking at the difference in electric potential between um, the, the two slots in the outlet there. So we're looking at the, um, the difference between sort of our starting point and our ending point for our current. Now, as a reminder, we're talking about difference in electric potential. Electric potential is essentially a measure of the amount of potential energy that our electrons have at a given location. Kind of like when we said before that height is sort of a, an approximate measure, gives us a general sense of how much gravitational potential energy an object has in a gravitational field. In the same way, electric potential, it's kind of like height. It gives us a general idea of the amount of electric potential energy that an electron has in a particular location. So electric potential then is a measure of energy. Voltage is giving us a measure of how much electric potential is changing. So if we put those two ideas together, what voltage is really telling us is something about how much energy our electrons are losing as they move throughout the circuit. Okay, so when we talk about voltage drops across a resistor, it's really allowing us to start to try to quantify how much energy our charge is losing during the process of moving through that resistor. Another way that we can kind of think about voltage is as being um, similar to pressure. If we think of current um, as being similar to the movement of water, then voltage is similar to the idea of water pressure pushing um, that current along in a particular direction and at a particular speed. Last key idea is the idea of resistance. So voltage is what propels our current forward and gets our charges to move. Resistance is trying to oppose that movement of current. So it describes a situation where the bonds between atoms are situated such that it's really hard for the electrons to move through. Um, whereas a low resistance situation would be one where our atomic bonds kind of allow the electrons to flow through nice and easy, like in metallic bonds where the electrons kind of can just freely move on through. But um, for other atomic structures, we have situations where electrons are, are held really tightly to their nuclei, and it's hard for the electrons to move through. 
that would be a, a material that has high resistance. It provides a lot of obstacles, a lot of blockages, trying to prevent our electrons from moving through the circuit. We can think of resistance as being kind of similar to the idea of friction. So much the same way that at the macroscopic level, friction slows objects down and converts their kinetic energy into heat. In the same way, resistors tend to slow our current down and also convert that electrical energy into heat energy as well. Okay, so resistance very similar to friction just down at the level of electrons rather than um, at our more macroscopic level. So then we've got current, we've got voltage, we've got resistance, and then Ohm's law is really kind of trying to sum up the relationships among all of these things. So two key relationships for you to really be thinking about then. Current and voltage, first of all, have a linear relationship that as voltage goes up, current goes up as well. The bigger the voltage, the bigger the difference in potential energy throughout the circuit, the faster we're gonna get charge moving through that circuit. Um, and again, we think of voltage as being similar to electric pressure. It's pushing our current along. It's describing how big of an energy drop we can experience by having our, um, our charges move from one side of the circuit to the other. So the bigger that voltage is, the more energy our charges can lose, the faster they're going to tend to move over to that position of lower energy. Okay, so the bigger that voltage is, the more current we're gonna have flowing through our circuit, the faster our charges are moving. Now, by contrast, current and resistance have an inverse relationship, meaning that as our resistance goes up, our current tends to go down. And this just kind of gets at the basic idea of what resistance is all about. So resistance is trying to slow down our current. So the more resistance we have, the more obstacles we have for the current to try to get through, the slower our charges are gonna be able to move and therefore the lower our current becomes, okay? And all of that gets summed up in this relationship, voltage equals current times resistance, that um, as voltage goes up, current's also gonna go up but as resistance goes up for a set voltage, current will tend to go down. So those are all the basic ideas of current, voltage, and resistance, and why they all come together in Ohm's Law the way that they do.